Hey everybody, it's Jim here. Earlier today, I drove down to the Guitar Center in Naples to check out Guitarathon, knowing that these Squire Classic Vibe Jaguars were on sale as part of the promotion. When I got there, there weren't any out on the sales floor. However, as luck would have it, they had this one in the back that was still in the box and had never been opened. They took it out of the box. I made sure it wasn't super heavy or have glaring issues, and I traded in a pedal, got a great price, and here we are today. I've never Never demoed or reviewed one of these guitars in its completely stock form, so this should be fairly interesting indeed. This is not a sponsored video, however, I do have affiliate links that help support this channel to Guitar Center, to Sweetwater, and to Tolman if you're over in Europe. If you choose to purchase anything via those links, I greatly appreciate it. It does help this channel continue to move on forward. To begin with though, we're going to put this guitar on the bench very briefly to check out any quality control issues we have and how the factory setup was out of the box. This Jaguar has a traditional style layout to it. In case you're not familiar, I'm going to do a basic overview. At the top, you have the rhythm circuit. You have a volume and a tone knob that only work for this when it's up like this all of these other controls are bypassed and you're only going to be able to have the neck pickup and these controls for it when you switch it down you have everything else available to you you have volume and a tone knob to get between different pickups this one right here is your on and off selector switch for the neck pickup this one is for the bridge pickup if both of those are down you're not going to get any sound now, you can combine the two or have either one on, and you have the option of putting this in, which is a strangle or a choke, and it basically removes a little bit of the low end coming out of the amplifier. Hardware-wise, you have a Mustang bridge, so there's one slot for each string to go in, which is a lot of players' preference compared to the vintage style of bridge. And then you have the best part of both the Jazzmaster and the Jaguar. You have the vibrato. These specific units do not come with a locking mechanism compared Compared to the Japanese Jaguars or the American reissues. This guitar comes with a bound Indian Laurel fingerboard and it is pretty dry if we're just being honest here. This could definitely go with a little bit of hydration from F1 or lemon oil. Uh, as far as the actual fret edges, they're fairly smooth. Nothing so egregious that you're going to cut yourself or anything like that, but it could definitely go with one or two passes from the Fretilizer Fret Edge Smoothener, and I'd be really happy with it as is. Uh, the back of the neck has a gloss finish on it, but it is not one of those ones where it's extremely glossy. Sometimes, and I've played some of the older versions of these Squires, and it feels like they just cake the gloss on. This particular guitar does not have that feeling to it, although it's nowhere near as smooth as, say, a satin finish or as comfortable to me, my preference, of a nitrocellulose finish. Let's go ahead and check out the fretwork. This guitar unironically has the best fretwork out of any Squire that I've ever had. And that's saying something. This is really, really good. There was one high spot on, I believe, the sixth fret right here, only on the base end of the neck. But outside of that, this is as good as you can really expect out of any guitar. When I first had to play this guitar, I felt the action was pretty comfortable. The strings weren't all that high off the board, and I was able to bend up without having any sort of choking out whatsoever. To get some general measurements here at the 12th fret, you're on 0.1 in inches, which is going to be just about 2.5 millimeters, give or take. And then on the treble side, 0 0.07. So in that sense, playability really good out of the box. Now outside of getting my fingerprints on the body itself, the actual fit and finish of this guitar out of the box from the factory, there is nothing to complain about. No paint oddities, no weird things with the binding, the fretwork is extremely good for a Squire and just in general for any guitar. And I don't have anything really negative to say thus far. I'm excited to sit and really give it a try. For today's demonstration, we're using one pedal and one amplifier. The Brown Amplification Protein and the Music Man 212 HD 130 Combo Amplifier. <laughs>
There are two things I want to start off highlighting that I really like about this particular guitar. This one is super light, it weighs 7 pounds 12 ounces. For a Jaguar, that's almost unheard of in this day and age most of the time. It's more like 8.5 pounds and up is the norm, so very pleasantly surprised by the light weight of this guitar. And the second thing I really liked was the bridge pickup. I thought it sounded fantastic, especially with a little bit of gain on it. This thing kind of wanted to have a little bit of hair on top and it was really inspiring to me to have a pickup and a guitar in this price range really feel like it was pretty good as is and that's not always the case. And as I'm talking about the pickups, I might as well stay there as we continue onward. The neck pickup, I didn't have the same exact love for. It was a little bit dark, a little bit muddy. I preferred it actually in the rhythm circuit because you're kind of already going for those tones and I thought it worked well for that, but it definitely doesn't have the clarity of, say, a Lawler or a Fralin pickup that I'm used to playing in offset guitars. On to the important parts though, because electrical components can always be changed out. And that's the playability and the tuning stability of the instrument. As the guitar sits right now, I did not put in any Big Ben's nut sauce, graphite, anything. I wanted to have the experience as if the guitar had just shown up in the mail. I opened the box and I just wanted to play it as is. I did stretch the strings a little bit. It didn't do a whole ton though, because anytime I started to really abuse the bar, 
it wasn't all that stable. Am I gonna really dock the guitar for this? No, because the first thing that I'm gonna recommend to you if you do purchase one of these guitars or really any offset guitar, have a set of strings already ready to throw on it. Make sure you do have lubricant to put in the actual nut slots themselves and stretch the strings out really well and you should be good to go. I won't know if there's any glaring problems with that in, until I actually do restring this guitar and get going, but as it stood, as long as I wasn't using the bar, it was pretty stable in terms of tuning stability. However, with that being said, if you're somebody who doesn't really need or want to make use of the locking mechanism that's available on the Japanese and the American versions of this vibrato unit, this factory one actually feels really good. It's got a great tension to it and it was really a pleasure to use the bar itself. I just wish that the guitar was returning back to tune a little bit more reliably. But that leads me to the one kind of con of this instrument and it's something that's been well documented. I've spoken about it in the past and it is the actual bridge itself now when you use the bar on this the bridge is meant to rock that's normal but when you really abuse this and I had this happen to me twice during the demonstration when I was filming I looked down at the bridge it was wildly out of tune the bridge was stuck too far forward and in one case all the way back so it wasn't returning back to zero or the standard position it's supposed to be in and obviously that's not good for tuning stability. One way you might be able to kind of fight against that if you want to try to make use of the stock bridge, go to a thicker gauge of string because these ship with very light strings, I believe 9 through 42. You can experiment and see what works for you. I would recommend at least going up to 10. Some people would say you have to have 12s, but try what works for you and see what you feel comfortable with before you take anybody's advice as gospel on the internet. Another thing you might try is putting some... Uh, tape around the actual posts themselves to reduce the amount of room that there is for the bridge to rock. You don't want it to sit firm and planted so it's not rocking, but reducing it a little bit might prevent some of those instances where it does go a little bit too far and won't return back to center. All in all, if you're somebody who's willing to put in a little bit of elbow grease to make it work, this is a really solid value and it brings me back to something I kind of alluded to earlier in the video. You don't have a whole ton of options with Jaguars, not just from Squire, but even with Fender these days. If you want one that is a little bit more on the traditional side, you basically have one of these guys and then you gotta jump all the way up to the new Vintera 2s. Those come with the maple neck and I know a lot of people that are really not not fans of that so you're limited then to jumping all the way up to a Johnny Marr and at that point we're talking about a guitar that is like $2,300 more dollars and I'm not going to mention any of the Japanese made instruments because they're not available at places that you can find easily in the United States to purchase new you'd have to purchase one of those used so I still think that this is actually pretty decent. I'm surprised by it. Um, does this blow me away? Is this the greatest value in the history of the world? No, but is this a pretty decent guitar that could potentially be a great guitar with a little bit of modifications and tender love and care? I absolutely think that that is possible. So if you can find one on sale, like they're right now at Guitar Center, swing on over and check it out. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, useful, and or entertaining, let me know by leaving the like button and leaving me a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you do enjoy this kind of stuff, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take it easy, everybody.